Hey guys, it's John with Long Haul Lifesavers. Today I want to go over the five things I've noticed travel nurses doing that tends to upset stationary nurses. So let's get into it. So when I say travel nurses, I've even been guilty of some of these. Um, so if you can kind of eliminate these things from your practice when you're going into a new, new hospital, uh, you can kind of fit in a little better. So let's go over some of these. Number one is acting like you know it all. Um, this profession, things are constantly changing. Not everyone knows everything. And if you're not learning something on a daily basis, you're not really doing your due, due diligence and doing the best for the patient. So you need to be constantly evolving and you can never know everything. So don't act like it. So there will be some times where you'll have either more education or more experiences than some of the individuals you're working with. And this is going to be a fine line. So you're going to want to figure out how to educate the individuals you're working with without making them feel like they're dumb um, or that they should know this information and they don't. So it's going to be very thin ice that you're going to have to walk on. Uh, it's going to be a little political in this situation, but that's going to come with the territory for us because we're traveling to all these different locations. Like for me specifically, I do a lot of level one traumas. So I get to see and experience a lot of stuff. And then when we go to smaller towns, uh, a lot of the individuals there haven't seen uh, patients on ECMO or rotoprone, CRRT, stuff like that. So you're gonna have that extra knowledge base that you can educate the staff members that you're working with on. Number two, I've had this happen to me, uh, travel nurses that I've been training tell me this. So they'll ask for help and then tell me that I'm not doing it right. I'm not helping them correctly. So if you're essentially, you know, feel like you're above everyone else and you want to tell people how to help you or if you're doing something wrong, which in this case, I was putting uh, chucks under a patient and I start the chucks at their hip because if you have a bowel movement to catch that, it goes on the chuck. So there's no point in putting it halfway up their back. Just my opinion, but evidently to that travel nurse, I was doing it incorrectly. So I've heard for I've heard from a lot of staff nurses that travelers tend to do this. So try to avoid that, and you're going to fit in a little better. Number three, this comes directly from the nurses that I'm working with on location right now. Uh, I asked them a bunch of different questions on. Um, when we were thinking about shooting this video, what they thought of travel nurses and if they had any pet peeves. Their number one complaint was bad mouthing the facility. So when you go into some of these smaller facilities and they may not have the up-to-date equipment or the best charting system. Um, so essentially not liking the equipment you're working with uh, tends to make the individuals feel like they're of lesser importance or that their job doesn't matter as much. So just some stuff I've heard around the water cooler. So make sure you watch what you say about the facility you're at. You are there to work to help them out. So you need to kind of act like an employee of theirs. Number four kind of goes along with number three. And this is comparing the facility that you're at to the one that you were trained at. Now I kind of did this my first couple contracts. Uh, we, I started out in a, a big facility. It was essentially its own city, it had its own zip code. So when you go to some of these other locations and well, we did it like this, or we tested a heparin drip with a heparin XA instead of PTT. And why aren't you doing this? Or why aren't you doing that? So kind of goes along with number three, it makes the facility or the individuals that are working at the facility feel less educated or um, ill-informed. So just try and keep that chatter to a minimum. It's all these tips are going to help you out, guys. I, I promise. I'm on my 17th contract right now, and I've tried to follow these five rules religiously, and it seemed to help me fit in with the people that I'm working with a little better. So number five is kind of a big one. Uh, everyone knows travel nurses make a higher pay rate than most of the full-time staff. But talking about it, it's just it's a little tacky and distasteful. Even in your normal lives, I, I don't like to talk about my pay with anyone, and I certainly don't ask people what they make. So there's kind of three things I don't talk about when I'm on the nursing floor. My pay, my religion, and my political views. Those are my three bugaboos that I really don't go over. So 
I just kind of watch what you say because staff nurses can get a little offended if they're getting called off and you're still coming into work because you have guaranteed hours and you're making more than them to boot. So it's just in bad taste. All right. You want to do a bonus one? Yeah. You guys want a bonus one? Okay. So this is the best way to piss off your manager. And I've had them yell at me a couple different times for doing this, but trying to recruit their core staff to go into travel nursing. They already are short staffed because you're there and then you're trying to take their core staff to go into travel nursing. So I have been yelled at a couple different times by managers. So I have heard of other travel nurses getting their contract canceled for doing this. So if you are going to try to recruit a core staff, uh, just make sure you do it on the DL. All right, guys, that's it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Also, turn on the notification bell for any future content and head on over to Instagram. Follow us at Long Haul Lifesavers. See you guys.